On behalf of the governor, the first lady, the House and Senate of the state of Florida, and the people of the state of Florida to the rest of the country, I would like to say you're welcome. Not even 24 hours after the Florida governor issued executive orders calling up the Floridian military to staff the ports, everything has changed. The two parties who weren't even at the table discussing things on Monday have now somehow magically reached an agreement and they're back to work. This is what the media doesn't want you to know, what the real reason was. They didn't all of a sudden say, you know what, we need to come together as Americans and work out our difference. No. They realized their strike wasn't going to have any effect if all of the ports in Florida were open. They wouldn't be able to cause enough pain. And make no mistake, that's what they were doing. They, were, they didn't care about you. They didn't give a damn about you. They just realized Florida punched all of their teeth out. They weren't going to be able to make the strike hurt and make it work for them. So they gave up and they gave in. Now we're going to get more into this. And oh, by the way, you can look up the Latin phrase here up in the upper right for yourself. Illegitimi non corborundum. There's sometimes I think, and I've said it before, we could have made a different path. And we wouldn't even be talking about a close election right now. But once again, to all of you who have signed up and supported the Florida Maquis at Patreon, thank you so much. QR code upper right makes it super, super easy. I've seen a lot of folks take advantage of it. Sign ups only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference? Over there, unlike here, we can take the gloves off. There's censorship here. Big shock, right? There's things I can't say. Entire topics I can't even address. I can't even get anywhere near it. But over there, because of that little speed bump, we can take the gloves off and we can talk about what really needs to be talked about. Love to have you over there. And for those of you, there's a 1, 5, 10, and 15 level. $10 level, the McKee unit commanders. We're going to start doing the briefings this week. And also, that goes the same for the McKee Brigade, Brigade Commanders, pardon me, at the $15 level. So, haven't forgotten about you guys. The briefings are coming. Those videos are not going to be for the faint of heart. I'm just going to say right now, probably going to offend a few folks, but that is the way things go. It was over two years ago. It was 2021 when everybody was just reeling from what had happened in the previous election that I said, well, it's not going to really matter for Florida because we're going to go our own way. It isn't going to matter what Joe Biden does. It isn't going to matter what Kamala Harris does. We're going to do our own thing. And here we are, 2024, and very little of what they have done has affected us. Why? Well, it's amazing what secessionist state government can do. And that's truly what it is. And you can talk about, well, on paper, technically, Maki, blah, blah, blah. Technically, on paper, the colonies were still the colonies even after the Revolutionary War, according to England. That's why they came back 25 years later. So, they just called it a, a minor rebellion that they were just going to let fizzle out. This isn't a minor rebellion. What's going on with Florida far exceeds anything that happened with the people who founded this country. For sure. For those of you who haven't heard, U.S. dock workers magically, all of a sudden, who weren't even talking, they weren't even discussing terms on Monday, have now agreed on a deal with port operators to end strike. Golly, I wonder what it could have been. I wonder what, it, what happened. What changed yesterday? What changed yesterday? What could it have possibly... Oh, that's right. That's right. The only leverage they had got taken away by common sense leadership. Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis, not even a day ago, executive orders, National Guard, Florida State Guard, all called up. We were going to put the ports back into operation. We were going to put the Florida Highway Patrol in charge of the whoever comes and goes from the ports, meaning no strikers. We're going to kick all those people out. 
And we were going to open all 16 major ports in Florida to all of the ships from the East Coast, and they realized you're, well, they were screwed. And make no mistake, they weren't the good guys. They were the most stupid, irrational people on the planet. Covered this in a previous video, by the way. What were they protesting? What were they protesting? What was their big problem? ILA workers over machines defend our jobs and our rights. These guys all, first of all, I haven't missed a meal in quite a long time, and they use automation. They use high-tech cranes. They use forklifts. They use trucks. They use power pallet jacks. They use all sorts of, all sorts of automation. And those, auto, those automated things have removed workers in the past from jobs. The forklift was the big one. Forklifts and trucks took away a lot of jobs. And there was arguments made a hundred and something years ago when the combustion engine was created that it was, it, it was anti-American. It was anti, anti-workers' anti rights. I mean, what do these guys want to do? Go back to this? Seriously, is this what they want to do? Just, just giant, you know, horse... You know, we have to have a whole crew of guys just to service the horses and to, to plant the fields full of barley and corn and oats to feed the horses. And, and then, of course, we're going to have to have a whole bunch of people shoe the horses. And then, of course, this is how we're going to conduct war. And this is how we're going to ship things. Horse and buggy, wooden wheels. We've got the wooden wheel makers. It's bizarre. It is absolutely bizarre. They did not give a damn. They did not give a damn about Chimney Rock, Asheville, North Carolina, didn't give a damn about any of it. They wanted their money. And make no mistake, this didn't change their mind. It wasn't, well, they saw the suffering in the Carolinas and they did the right thing. No, they didn't. They would have never started. They would have never started the strike if that had been the case. These were not the good guys. This was the good guy who stood up and did the unpopular thing, something that should have been done by every governor in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, even Virginia, should have overridden this and said, all of our ports are going to be open. And yes, Georgia, well, Tennessee doesn't have ports, but Tennessee could have, well, I mean, they have the Mississippi River, don't they? I'm not mistaken. Memphis? I don't know if that was going to be affected, East Coast ports, but point being, point being, this is why, and I know it makes a lot of people mad, but I think we really missed an opportunity to stand up the right person in the right position. I'm not saying Donald Trump wouldn't have had a role in government, that he couldn't have done some good. But can you imagine how lopsided it would be right now? Can you imagine how? how lopsided it would be right now if there wasn't an anti-Trump Republican movement. Oh, the DeCheneys and all these, all these people from the Bush administration, all them, none of them would have signed, signed on to being anti-DeSantis. Not one of them. There would be no talk of felony convictions, no talk of January 6th, there would be no talk of any of it. Not all that would be gone. What the hell would the Democrats have to talk about? I tell you what they would have to talk about. There's only one thing they could talk about. The two million plus people that in the last four years, because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that have moved to Florida. The two million people plus that have moved. And do the math on that, by the way, as to how many. And that's net. Because there's a whole bunch of people, a bunch of liberal lefties that left too. Do the math on that. The entire a state, a state that was cut, that was always the swing state, the quintessential swing state. Who is going to take Florida? Who remembers hanging chads? Who remembers the whole the whole Bush Gore two thousand thing? Florida was always the big swing state. Now, the registered Republicans outnumber the Democrats by a huge number. It is the most lopsided major state out there. What happened? 
What happened to Florida? One thing happened to Florida. This happened to Florida. We had an actual conservative take charge. And in this particular case, there is no other argument to be made. Florida just saved the United States from a massive financial collapse. This one order saying, okay, look, unions, we know you think you have teeth. We know that you think you have teeth and that you can hold everybody hostage and you can create financial pain and distress at a time when that's the last thing we could use anyway, regardless of the storm. Regardless of the atmospheric tsunami that slammed into the southeast, regardless of that, the last thing we needed right, anybody needed right now, was shortages and higher prices. We know that you think you can do that, that you can say we can't take anymore and they'll just acquiesce to your wishes. Well, guess what? Nope. Nope. Not going to happen. Not going to happen, not today, not tomorrow. It's just not something that will be allowed to happen. Some of the most selfish people on the planet. And by the way, you're welcome to you too. Because had you caused the amount of pain that you wanted to cause, believe me, believe me, America would have remembered. Nobody was on your side. Nobody was, especially these people, they weren't on your side. Nobody was on your side. Florida took matters into its own hands. And that's the hallmark. That is the hallmark of an independent republic. We just did something by ourselves and the rest of, well, I guess what used to be the United States of America, The rest of the states are all going to benefit from it. We just did more in one day than the Biden-Harris administration has done in four years. And some might say, well, who would have run with DeSantis? Who would have been a good choice? Can you imagine Byron Donalds, DeSantis and Donalds? I love this quote. It's an absolutely probably would go down in my top five most common sense quotes from the last five years. Byron Donalds represents Southwest Florida in Washington. Married, three beautiful kids, and this whole CRT thing, oh, by the way, which doesn't even get talked about anymore, the whole CRT nonsense that Florida got rid of literally in five seconds. His quote was, the essence of critical race theory would teach my three biracial children that I, their black father, am oppressed by America's history of white supremacy and that their mother, my wife, is my oppressor. Representative Byron Donalds. If those two ran, they wouldn't even be talking about who might be president. They wouldn't even be talking about it. It would be such a runaway right now. It would be so unbelievable. Oh, by the way, you mean just like the governor's race in Florida? The governor's race in Florida where the governor won by 20 points? Wait, no, Florida, Mikey, you're wrong about that. He didn't win by... Yeah, he did. He won the governor's race in Florida by 20 percentage points. But Florida, Mikey... Florida, Mikey, wait, how could that be? That could be. You've got you got liberals in St. Pete and Tampa, and you've got liberals in, in in Orlando, and you've got them in Miami, and you've got them in Gainesville, and you've got them in Tallahassee. Yeah, we do. We've just got a hell of a lot more voting conservatives. It wasn't even close, and the governor didn't spend a nickel campaigning. That's the dirty little secret about Florida's big win in the last governor's race. The governor's, he didn't spend a nickel, literally didn't spend a nickel campaigning. He just said, look at my record, and then he went back to business. 
and they couldn't get within 20 percentage points of him. If you want to know who the deep state is really afraid of, if you want to know who the deep state is really, really afraid of, who they know they can't beat, take one good look. Take one good look. They know. And I love this picture. This is from the Strikers. If it's a fight they wanted to war, they're going to get. Yeah, it lasted what? What it last? 30 seconds? 30 seconds when you realized you couldn't win? Yeah, gosh, those uh, <laughs> those chicken Big Macs are going to be, well, I shouldn't probably. Anyway, never mind, never mind. I guess if you have one of those dock worker friends, you should ask them, well, you know, we shouldn't we go back to when there was really no automation of any kind? I mean, technically the wheel is automation, isn't it? I mean, if you've got 100 boxes that you need moved 50 miles, if you have 100 boxes that you need moved 50 miles, and each box is a two-man carry, well, gosh, you're going to need 200 men. And, of course, you know, I mean, that. Look, think of all those jobs. Think of all those jobs, just hand-carrying, picking up and hand-carrying the boxes. Oh, you know what? Boxes are automation, too putting things in boxes, you know, because that, that makes it a lot easier to carry things. That So I guess get rid of any, any boxes because boxes are automation. Tape is automation. You know, I tell, you know what? So are shoes because you can walk a lot farther in shoes than you can barefoot. So we shouldn't have shoes either. So, so no shoes, uh, no boxes, no tape, and, and really roads. Roads are the, the ultimate in automation. So we should dig up all the roads, get rid of all the roads, and, and then just, just amble through the forest. If, if you make something that somebody, then you have to pay them to go take that thing, just that one singular thing, and hand walk it barefoot, by the way, through the forest to, to the next town or whatever, you know, to, to ply it for sale. It's ridiculous. What they were, what they were protesting was absolutely ridiculous. So, anyway... I will leave it there. Hey, North Carolina, you had enough yet? You had enough of Democrats yet? Just let us know. Let us know. We'll be happy as a clam to bring you into the family when you had your gut full of abandoning Democrats leaving you to rot out there in the mountains. Love to have you. Brigade commanders, unit commanders, stay tuned. Brand new content coming at Patreon. Love to have you. Love to have you over there. It's only a dollar. There's a one at the base level for everyone. Virtually everyone can afford a dollar a month. There's a five dollar level. Need to know. Ten dollar level. Unit commanders. Fifteen dollar level. Brigade commanders. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. Pray for those in the Carolinas, Georgia. Those have been hit hardest. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.